Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Pokemon Go etiquette today. Uh, just a little bit different of an idea that I thought I'd talk to you guys about. Just different things that you should keep in mind or things that you should do to, you know, minimize your annoyingness or annoyance to other people and also just to be respectful and stuff like that to other people in the background as normal this is um or not as normal uh like i said in the last video for these three videos last one this one and the next one it's full lures at the chocolate cafe and then we are back to like regular i guess regular videos uh where i won't just be showing full lures but Thought it'd be a little bit different, so if you didn't watch last video, go check it out. Uh, but that's what's going on in the background. Full lures sped up when there are no Pokemon. There were a lot of there are two clips within or two sections within this lure that really spawned a lot. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of sped up gameplay in the background. But let's get into what I was going to talk about today, which is Pokemon etiquette. Uh, first of all. Simple things that, like, shouldn't have to be said is, like, don't trespass. I'll get more into these in, like, during the video, but don't trespass. Don't do anything illegal to to get Pokemon. Don't park where... Don't park at a parking meter and then not pay and then run off and go catch a Pokemon real quick because you, you run the risk of getting a ticket. Like, there are simple things I shouldn't have to tell you, but people continue to get into trouble for don't go into places that are closed uh, because then you get the police called on you. But those are just the simple things we shouldn't have to tell each other, but I, I, guess we, I guess we do. And then I don't get it. People get mad because these places call the police on them for being stupid. Like, I don't know what you expected. Or you get a ticket for not paying at a parking meter. Like, I'm not sure what, I, I'm, not sure what I'm supposed to tell you about that. Like, I feel like that's just common sense. But... Let's get into it about Pokemon etiquette. First of all, I want to talk about churches, I guess. So, churches are 10... I'm just... Okay. This gets into that messy gray area because, you know, there's different churches based on religion. There's different times that they go to church and all of that stuff. I'm going to talk about the most common church that gets a pokey stop. okay? I'm not saying that the other religions don't matter or anything like that i'm just not going to talk about them because most of the time a lot of the time with um with other types of churches other than catholic or christian churches they don't get a pokey stop as much uh like there's a korean church down the road for me as well as a russian and let's see here there's the russian church and is it is it a ukrainian church I don't know. There's there's three there's two foreign churches, the Korean and the Russian, and I forget what the third one is. They don't have pokey stops in them, so I don't think it's necessarily vital that I talk about ones that don't necessarily. Most churches that are semi decent in size have a pokey stop at them, and so that's what I'm going to talk about here, and just the times you know you should avoid churches and stuff like that. So Monday, Tuesdays. And Thursdays, there is rarely anything going on at right, and Friday. We'll go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, those days tend to not have anything going on at churches. They're a free game. Just drive up, hit up your pokey stop, use a lure, whatever you want to do at the church. Um, just I, I would say just don't loiter there for like hours. You know, if you want to if you want to try out one lure there or whatever, or if it's got a nice lure spot and you want to, there's like a triple lure spot out at church. Go ahead, triple lure up for a half hour and then get out of there. Don't loiter around. Don't sit there forever. Um, but, but you can go there. I think Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursday, Fridays, because there's tends to not be anything happening at churches. I'll go to Wednesdays first. So Wednesdays, I would say you could do the same thing as the other four days. Just don't do it like after 6.30, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Um, I don't know. I, I would assume it's 6 or 7 anywhere. I don't think I have to say Eastern. Just 6 or 7 o'clock. Don't go to them on Wednesdays. That tends to be youth group days during the week. Or it's the popular day to have just groups at the church. So I would just say avoid churches on Wednesdays from 7 o'clock to midnight one 
1, 2 a.m. at the latest, especially during the summer, 1 or 2 a.m. at the latest. During school, like 11, 10 at the latest. But that's when uh, during the week youth groups, uh, during the week church groups, and sometimes a service is provided on Wednesday night. So I would just avoid churches. If the parking lot's empty, obviously there's nothing going on. But if there's cars there, assume on Wednesdays that there actually is something going on there. I would just tend to avoid churches uh, like 7 to, I'll be safe and say midnight, 7 to midnight, uh, avoid churches um, on Wednesdays to Saturdays. I would say you can go in the morning pretty safe, um, probably up until noon, and then it's just going to depend on church what's going on on Saturdays. Some of them don't do anything on Saturdays, and some of them just like Wednesday have activities going on all days on Saturday. So I would just, you know, parking lot's empty, that's cool, go on in there. Uh, if there's a bunch of cars in there, I would just say, you know, be respectful, move on, go find yourself another pokey stop. Uh, and then on Sundays, I would just avoid churches on Sundays. I don't go um, spin pokey stops or do anything Pokemon Go related at church on Sunday. Uh, so I would just avoid them on Sunday. You know, that's the church. That's the biggest church day. Uh, and Saturday night, Saturday nights and Sundays, I would just avoid churches. Don't go, don't go messing with pokey stops. Or going and catching Pokemon at churches. Just avoid those. Just don't go there on Saturday nights and Sundays. Just kind of be respectful. You know, people are there. People are there doing... They're trying to go to church. It's a serious thing. They're trying to have their their day of worship. Like, you could you could avoid the, the church for, like, a day and a half per week. Uh, and just... Don't mess with Pokemon there. This is especially the. I thought this video was especially important more now that we're going to be getting this new nearby list. I just think it's more important now more than anything because Pokemon are going to be spawning at these and they're going to be tempting to go to. But I think we can all have a little bit of etiquette and a little bit of respect for other people with these. And that's just what I wanted to kind of go over today, I guess, is my overall thing. I just wanted to talk about the etiquette overall. That's what brought on this whole video is that the new nearby thing is coming. It's going to tell you where Pokemon are and what Pokestop they're at. So churches are going to get a lot more high traffic if Pokemon are spawning there. Now, with that being said, I doubt a church will sponsor a Pokestop, but coming soon, um, businesses and places can sponsor Pokestops. Now, I'm not entirely sure how exactly this is going to work. Like, if a McDonald's sponsors a Pokestop, okay, does just the McDonald's that sponsored the Pokestop get a Pokestop that's uh, juiced with Pokemon? Or is it every McDonald's gets juiced with a Pokestop? Or, you know, our business is going to pay for X amount, you know, uh, like if McDonald's wants it just in the big cities, they'll have juiced Pokey stops at McDonald's in the big cities. Um, that'll be interesting to see how all that goes down. But I doubt any church is going to sponsor a juiced Pokey stop. More more than likely, a, a church is more likely to get rid of a Pokey stop at their place than than get a juiced Pokey stop than sponsor a Pokey stop. So, with that in mind, I think that's about all I have to say about churches. I would say just completely avoid them on Sundays. Be safe. Just avoid them on Sundays. Um, then you don't step on anybody's toes. You're not a nuisance. You're not loitering. You're not you're not interrupting anything at the church. So I would just avoid them on Sundays. And then just keep in mind on Wednesdays, Friday nights, I guess, rarely on Friday nights, but maybe. And then Saturdays, just keep an eye out. Parking lots full. Don't uh, just don't go in there. I guess if the parking lots full, or if the parking lots generally full, just kind of avoid churches. Moving on now, grave graveyards slash cemeteries. I keep calling them graveyards. They're cemeteries. I don't know. They're cemeteries. Okay, cemeteries. So I would say avoid cemeteries during the day or during nice weather. Uh, people are going there, you know, to pay respects to family or friends or even, you know, ceremonies are going on there. Just, in my opinion, avoid them on nice days or during the day. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, like today I went and recorded a video. It's pouring rain outside. Nobody's going to be at the cemetery today. Now, there were some other people playing Pokemon Go, but 
no one was there to pay their respects or to bury anyone today. So today I thought was a perfect day to go to the cemetery. Now cemeteries are usually really lit up with pokey stops because certain graves are marked, certain memorials at the at the cemeteries are marked, and different um, areas like that are marked uh, for pokey stops. So there's a lot of pokey stops that tend to be at cemeteries. And also, just be respectful if you go during the day of anybody who may be... Um, during the day, I would suggest walking more than driving around the cemetery. And also, be respectful of the groundskeepers. Uh, you know, they're trying to mow and all of that different stuff. Don't get in their way or anything like that. They're trying to upkeep and make the cemetery look nice. Don't, don't get in their way or be a nuisance to them. Um... And obviously, just stay away from anybody who is, you know, kneeled or standing by a gravestone. Also, when you're walking in a cemetery, I can't believe how many people I've seen do this. Pay attention to where you are. Like, don't be walking over or walking on headstones or touching a bunch of monuments. Um, just be respectful. Like, there are people here. This isn't like, this isn't just like a park. It's not like a regular park. It is a it is a cemetery. You got to be a little, or not a little bit, you need to be respectful of what's there and the people and everything there. Going at night and during rain and weather, I think is your best bet. I think it's the best time to go. Uh, at night, they tend to just be full of people playing Pokemon Go. Uh, just like during the day, don't walk on headstones. Don't be stupid. It's still a cemetery. Be respectful. And I think... You know, everything, you know, everything can be fine at a cemetery. Go at night, have your fun, like, spooky cemetery uh, uh, Pokemon hunting. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to go to, there's two cemeteries pretty close to my house. I'm going to go one of these nights, uh, like, 1 or 2 or 3 a.m. and go and catch some Pokemon. But, like, at that time, no one's obviously going to be there. So, I'm going to go then and uh, just avoid people entirely. Or today, when it was rainy... Uh, there was one lady that came and she was just putting in some flowers, so I, I stayed away. Um, I stayed on the complete other side of the cemetery from her until she left. Uh, and so cemeteries are pretty easy. Just, just be respectful of the people that are there. Try to avoid people at all costs in those scenarios. Don't, um, don't be driving or walking around talking while people are at uh, gravestones. Just... You know, I think it's pretty easy. Just be respectful, and and I don't think there's any problems with cemeteries. Uh, next, I'm going to go on to golf courses. I think I've said everything that's important about cemeteries. I don't think there's anything I, I needed to say relating to them else, other than to just be respectful. Go during times when no one's going to be there. It just saves you the hassle of, you know, maybe being... Like, you can be really rude... On accident like I don't think a lot of the people who are rude at cemeteries playing Pokemon Go are like purposely rude I think it's more of an accident it's more of like accidental or they're just naive and don't know what they're doing but I think it is important with cemeteries and churches first like first that it's important to be respectful of what's going on there and all of that different stuff but moving on to golf courses. Now I have a unique kind of perspective on golf courses that not a lot of YouTubers have because a lot of YouTubers and a lot of players are mad at golf courses about their thing but I actually play golf and I played it a lot um, before I injured my foot. Now I haven't played for a lot for two years. Um, last year and then now this summer. I, I am going to get some rounds in here at the end and I'll probably I might go play like a solo round and take my laptop and we'll see if we can do any Pokemon Go while I'm playing around a golf. But I do play a lot of golf, so I know I get all the rules and I get all of that different stuff. So let me talk about golf courses. So golf courses tend to be expensive to play at. They're expensive to, to maintain and they're expensive. It's an expensive hobby. It's not like a cheap hobby to play. It, it costs a lot of money. Clubs are expensive. If you want to be good at golf and you want to, you want to have pretty good equipment. It's expensive. Um, I have to get new clubs next year uh, to play. I, I've been needing new clubs for a while. I just haven't upgraded them because I've had this footage. I've had the foot, so I just haven't seen a point to go ahead and upgrade my clubs. But 
I guess like I was saying, with that, um, a set of new clubs, um, I'm going to get, if I get a full set with just drivers, woods, uh, a hybrid, and irons, and a putter, it'll probably run me six, seven hundred dollars, uh, next spring, and that's, that's not on, like, the high end, um, I'll probably get all of that next year, and then in the next summer, I'll probably upgrade to TaylorMade, uh, Woods, and Driver, which will probably run me about a thousand bucks to get the ones that I want for that, so it really runs a high price to play golf, and people who play golf, especially people who are good at golf, and especially at nice courses, take it extremely seriously. Um, I don't technically, I don't really think I take golf seriously. I just play it a lot, and I don't know. The better you are at golf, the more seriously you take it. It tends to be. I'm pretty good at golf, but I don't really take it that serious. But I get where people are coming from. I do play golf sometimes with some people that take it really seriously. So I get it. And then at the at high end golf course, it's supposed to be, you know, a an not upper class. I don't really want to call it that. Like a uh, I don't, I can't find the proper word, but it's supposed to be a, a night, a classy experience, I guess. You know, you're supposed to dress up, at least wear a polo and nice shorts or nice pants. Um, not, not like basketball shorts and a t-shirt. You're supposed to dress up a little bit, look nice and, uh, be respectful. You know, on the course, you're supposed to be respectful, wait for the people in front of you, you know don't hold other people up, you know, if you're a slow golfer, you know, let people play through, all of that different stuff, you're supposed to be respectful and all of that different stuff, and then it's also expensive to just play around a golf, so, you know, you have to, you're paying a, you're paying a good amount of money for a good experience of golfing, it's not like a wild experience, you're not supposed to be out there like yelling and hollering and all that different stuff at golf courses, and the big thing is, is that it's expensive and it's supposed to be a nice, pleasant, calm experience, I guess, to play golf. And, you know, having kids walking around on the golf course, for one, it's dangerous to the kids because think about getting hit with a golf ball like this. That's, that's going to really hurt. So not only is there that, there's the injury issues with people just randomly walking around on a golf course. Two, it's rude to the people trying to play golf. It's also rude to the owners because technically you're technically you're trespassing because you're on their property and you're not you're not paying and you're not doing anything on it. You're just loitering really. You're not really trespassing, you're loitering. There we go. So you're loitering for one, but you're ruining the experience of their customers. So they're gonna ask you to leave. I don't really know why this is like a negative thing that they're asking you to leave, but they're going to ask you to leave. And and then people at night, you know, people are jumping fences because golf courses have tended to be uh, nice nests for different things. So a lot of times Pokemon nests are at a golf course. So people are hopping fences at night and sneaking on to golf courses in order to catch, <laughs> to access these nests. And so the golf courses, a lot of them are getting their they're getting their pokey stops removed and they're trying to get their nest removes and all of that and so I think it's just best for everyone if golf courses just weren't a part of the game because they actually have become a big issue people are getting the police called on them and all that different stuff at golf courses because golf courses are supposed to be you know an expensive place that you go to that you pay for the service you know you pay for the good service of not random kids walking around the golf course so it goes both ways you know i i get it like i would be okay if people were just allowed to walk um uh like around the entrance and around the 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 putting green and the driving range and all that stuff that wouldn't affect me but i don't want to have to worry about people walking around when like i'm teeing off i don't want to have to worry about watching for oh there's a kid down there playing pokemon go let me uh let me hold up and wait until they get walked off the the course. Uh, so it goes both ways. I see it both ways, but I agree. I tend to agree with the golf courses that, you know, don't trespass at night. Because then it is trespassing if they're not open. If they're open, then you're loitering. So, you know, if anything else, 
buy a bucket of balls and go to the driving range if you want to be on the course. Uh, but other than that, just try, uh, my opinion is just avoid golf courses altogether when playing Pokemon Go. It hasn't been a great, you know, little experience here with everybody and golf courses. So uh, between Pokemon Go users and golf course people, so I would just avoid it altogether. Uh, next, we have... Um, what was I going to talk about next? Oh, next we have uh, hotels in different areas like that. Uh, you need to... Those are even more interesting uh, than the golf courses because they usually tend to be compact. So a lot of them you can get their Pokestops and the Pokemon by just simply walking around it. You don't have to go in it. But some of them are more resort type and there'll be statues and stuff within the hotel that you can't actually reach from the outside so it makes it really hard to actually get the pokey stops or the pokemon there and what's going to happen is hotels are going to have to start removing them because people actually people go to the hotels and sneak in or sneak by or whatever and just like just like at the golf course at hotels people are there for the experience to stay there undisturbed you know be able to sit at sit at the pool or whatever without random people who didn't pay to be there there out there at the pool or whatever or out and about in the hotel making a nuisance so once again it's one of those things where you can see it both ways but i do actually think the places of business are like they have a uh what am i trying to say they have a um, they have a point uh, that, you know, don't don't loiter, you know, all that different stuff. Don't trespass. Don't do all this different stuff. Just avoid these areas. And the main thing, like I said, is that these Pokestop, you know, Pokemon are going to start spawning at Pokestops at regular frequency. And the game is going to tell you what Pokestop it's at. And the biggest thing is, is when good Pokemon spawn in areas where people aren't supposed to go and it's going to create issues people are going to hop the fence people are going to find ways in they're going to trespass they're going to go try to get these pokemon and it's going to create issues so i don't know i thought i'd talk about pokemon etiquette today because i guess i guess we have to also driving i i guess the hotels let me finish on the hotels hotels are pretty much like the golf courses just keep in mind you know people are paying for that the hotels have to they have to have customer service and people at the hotel aren't going to want you walking around playing Pokemon Go when they're trying to, you know, either relax or do whatever they, they want on vacation or whatever they're doing there at the hotel. So I, I, I understand the hotel's points, uh, but let's move on. Driving. So first of all, you shouldn't drive while you're playing Pokemon Go. But I'm to a certain extent. I mean, like, on the open road, you shouldn't be driving while playing Pokemon Go. If you're driving around, like, a park, I think it's fine if you're on your po if you're on Pokemon Go. I don't think it's a big deal then. But it's one of those other things. Be aware of your surroundings. You know, if you're if you're playing Pokemon Go, you know, in a car key, or on a bike, don't just stop randomly, you know, check. Make sure no one's behind you or anything. Then go ahead and stop. And don't stop in the middle of the road, obviously, with your car. Like, try to pull off to the side. At least let cars get around you. Um, there was actually a kid the other day. I was on my way to work, and he had to be playing Pokemon Go on his phone. I don't, there's no other reason you would do this. So we were. I was on my way to work, and it's just a two-lane road uh, that, I, that runs that I take to work. And so all of a sudden he just stops and he's just stopped and there's another car in front of me. He just stops and he he turns on his flashers. OK, but no one can get around him because it's actually a pretty busy, busy road. So no one can get around him. And finally, finally, uh, an old lady stopped that was in the other lane and let a few people go around. And when I went around him, he was looking down at his phone. So and then shortly i think she only let me and the car in front of me through and then she decided she was gonna go so um then as soon as i got around just a little bit of ways down once i got just a little bit of ways he started moving again so it had to be i don't see any other thing that could have been other than pokemon go that he would stop put his flashers on and then go ahead and move after that but even if it wasn't it's just a, it's a good example that you know 
be respectful of the areas that you're around when you're playing Pokemon Go and what you're sitting at and all of that different stuff where you're be aware of your surroundings when you're in your car or on your bike or whatever you're doing to get around just be aware or like when you're on your phone and you're looking down playing Pokemon Go look up and look down and keep an eye you know in front of you for people walking not playing the game or people trying to get around you if you're swaying back and forth because a lot of people when they're walking and you're not you're looking down you're you'll tend to like kind of sway back and forth so you know kind of make sure you're walking straight uh in a straight line not weaving back and forth don't bump into people make sure you're looking up and all of that different stuff and then i think i i, I think finally is at parks um just make sure that you're, um, that you're being, that you go, or what am I, it's kind of hard to phrase some of this stuff. At parks, um, not too many rules at parks, but all I'd say about at parks is just make sure when you're walking around or all of that within the park, uh, stick to generally, you know, um, uh, don't go to, don't, don't go, like, Pokemon, you know, like, at parks, they have, like, tables and chairs and all that set up. Like, if a Pokemon is spawned over there, you know, quickly walk over there and get the Pokemon on your phone and then walk away. Don't, like, stand next to people's cookouts or people's family get-togethers or all of that different stuff or people just hanging out. Don't, like, just be standing there on your phone right next to them while they're, like, trying to have conversations or personal conversations or whatever. Don't be walking around or standing right next to them while you're doing it kind of just get the pokemon and walk away so that you're not disrupting their thing you're already kind of disrupting their thing by walking up to them while they're having this get together or whatever but at least if you just walk up and get it and go away you're not being a constant nuisance by standing there trying to catch this pokemon right next to them so you know just get the pokemon so you can tap on it and then just walk away from them but that's gonna do it guys just a little bit of pokemon etiquette from me uh there's probably some other stuff i probably should have covered in this video that i just didn't but i thought i covered a lot of the big points and it was mostly just about the new nearby list and how um the new nearby list and how we're going to have a picture of the pokestop in the pokemon there so it's going to attract more traffic to different pokey stops and just some of the things that you should keep in mind about the different pokey stops that you may be going to and just the different uh things to keep in mind but i hope you all enjoyed the video drop it like if you did subscribe if you haven't and i will catch you all in the next episode peace out